hello and welcome to this video in this video i'll be sharing uh, some of the information about uh, the v-dipole antenna that i use uh, for receiving weather images from ANOA 15 18 19 and the russian meteor m2 weather satellite as you can see in the photograph um, this is uh, the v-dipole antenna it has uh, two elements which are 120 degrees apart now let us calculate the length of each of the elements that we need to use here is the frequency range of uh, these weather satellites meteor m2 and noah 19 transmit at 137.1 megahertz and on the other hand noah 18 transmits at 137.9125 megahertz in between is the noah 15 which transmits at 137 dot 62 megahertz so if you look at this range the center frequency could be 137.5 megahertz we'll be using the formula length in meters is equal to 147 divided by the frequency that we need to calculate for in megahertz so if you use uh, the frequency 137.5 megahertz we come to a length of 106 0.8 centimeters this divided by 2 gives us the length of each element which comes out to be 53.4 centimeters now there is uh, an important note for this the length of each element should include the connecting wires length up to the coaxial connector or the coax and this connecting wires length should be kept as small as possible the diameter of the element that I'm using is 3 fourth of an inch. As you can see here, the orientation of uh, the antenna should be south, north, as can be seen from this photograph. The next question that comes to mind is why horizontal? And that is a very nice explanation given at one of the web page uh, for which I will Put a link in the description this is a web page i often refer to but the summary of this question is since the antenna is horizontally polarized all the vertically polarized terrestrial signals will be reduced by 20 db most terrestrial signals are broadcast in vertical polarization and so this can help significantly reduce interference and overloading on your rtl sdr this is the reason why it is mounted in a horizontal fashion so that it can give a horizontally polarized configuration. I modeled this V-dipole antenna in MMANA-GAL software. I placed the antenna at 3 meters height from the crown and this is the result. The left hand figure is uh, the bird's eye view of the antenna and the antenna is this way. So this could be south and this could be north as we saw in the earlier photograph. Here you can see that at west and east directions there are two depressions that can be seen here. On the right hand side is the side view of the antenna you can see three significant lobes are formed here the lowest lobe is at 10 degrees and it is giving a gain of 7.1 the second lobe uh, is at 33 degree angle elevation angle and it is giving a gain of 6.3 the third lobe, which is at 63 degrees, is given a gain of 5.5. And at 90 degrees, uh, the gain is 2.9. So you can see that this antenna gives a very high gain at lower elevation angles, which is very useful because when the satellite is at lower elevation angle, the signals received by us are the weakest 
and since this antenna has got a higher gain at lower elevation angles it will receive the lower elevation angles of the satellite very nicely but there are two disadvantages of this particular configuration as i said before there are two depressions here so at east or west directions uh, to the antenna the sensitivity will be less and it could drop some signals coming in this direction also there are sharp depressions as it can be seen here and here you can see that at 20 degrees it is minus 6.7 and at 47 it is minus 7.7 .7. so it is talking about these two depressions the gain is very low in these two areas and there might be a problem in receiving the signals at 20 and 47 degrees elevation angle this was the first configuration that i used and it gave me good results all these drawbacks were not practically seen to that extent and i did receive good images at passes that were especially having a maximum elevation angle of 50 and above i was very happy with this configuration but definitely there is room for improvement so the next modeling that i did was at one meter height from the ground and you can see that the first drawback that we had about the two depressions in these areas was reduced but it also changed the radiation pattern seen here now you can see that the gain at lower elevation angle which was 7.1 earlier is now just reduced to 0.8 this particular configuration is giving better result starting from 20 degrees till let's say 50 degrees and beyond which it again reduces so this particular configuration was not helpful that much the next modeling that i did was at 0.5 meters from the ground and here you can see that the radiation pattern is much more complete and it gives an omnidirectional quality to this antenna on the right hand side you can see that the depressions that were found earlier were gone and also it gave a complete round radiation pattern but sadly again the gain at lower angle was not impressive this particular configuration gave better results at 50 degrees and above so from 50 to 90 it gave good values of gain so in conclusion you can see that the v dipole at a height of 3 meters give very nice gain values at an angle between 0 to 20 but it also overall gave better results except for the two drawbacks that we talked about earlier the second configuration uh, that is at height of one meter was very good between 20 to 50 degrees elevation angle and the third configuration that is 0.5 meter from the ground gave a better result between 50 to 90 degrees so all these three configurations together gives a very nice result so if you can devise a mechanism by which as the satellite comes to the horizon the antenna is at three meter height and then as the satellite increases its elevation angle 
the antenna is at one meter height and as it goes to an elevation angle between 50 and 90 the height of the antenna is 0.5 meters if such a mechanism is devised then the antenna will perform very well however this is a tedious idea and may not be practically possible so what can be done also I went from 3 meters to 1 meter and then 0.5 meter why didn't I use 2.5 2 or 1.5 meters height from the ground as you can see from the radiation patterns these radiation patterns are worst if you compare it with 3 1 and 0.5 meters from the ground mostly they are because of the large depressions large area of depressions and sudden fall of of the gain and hence this configuration with 2.5 to and 1.5 meter height from the ground was not taken into consideration so how can we improve upon the v dipole to eliminate some of the drawbacks that we have seen also why did i choose three meter height from ground now this is more related to my location there are certain obstacles around my location that require me to raise the antenna above three meters so that i can eliminate these obstacles and get a clean signal so for me this configuration suited according to my location but as we have seen earlier there are certain drawbacks like the depressions seen here and certain deep depressions seen at 20 degrees and at 50 degrees so if we are able to remove these depressions and somehow if we are able to fill these depressions out then this antenna at 3 meters would be very good especially for my location so i introduced a reflector so here you can see that this is the radiation pattern for the v dipole at a height of 3 meters from the ground and a reflector at 2.5 meters height from the ground so the distance between the main elements of the antenna and the v reflector is 0.5 meter the reflector length chosen here is the element length plus 30 mm so the reflector is 30 mm bigger than the antenna element so each reflector is 30 mm bigger than the individual leg of the main antenna element and here you can see that the depression that was earlier on the left hand side of the radiation pattern was removed by this reflector it is giving a more oval kind of radiation pattern which makes the antenna omnidirectional so the first drawback was removed on the right hand side it can be seen that the deep depressions that were there at 20 and 50 were quickly removed let's go back one more time and see that at 20 it was minus 6.7 and at 50 it was minus 2.5 and here you can see that at 20 it is just minus 1 and at 50 it has actually improved quite a lot to 4.8 one more time at 20 it was minus 6.7 and at 50 it was 2.5 which is now minus 1 and 4.8 respectively so the reflector has definitely improved the drawbacks of the v dipole 
Now again, I'm using it at three meters to serve a certain purpose. I have obstructions that require me to have the height at three meters. And so the reflector is kept 0.5 meters below it, which becomes a height of 2.5 meter from the ground. But is this the best configuration? I don't think so. This is probably the second best. I simulated the antenna with a height of one meter from the ground. And since the reflectors are 0.5 meter below the main antenna element, the height of reflector from the ground becomes 0.5 meter. Here you can see that the radiation pattern on the left hand side is not a big round or a big oval. It is somehow less than one we saw at three meter height. But on the right hand side, if you see, the radiation pattern has improved a lot. And the figures show that the gain is very good all throughout and there are no depressions. The only disadvantage here is at 10 elevation angle. The gain is 1.2. The one we saw earlier with the reflector, it is 6.2. So each configuration has got its advantages and disadvantages and you have to use it according to your location or your need. For example, if you are at a location like me, where, are there, where there are certain obstacles surrounding my location, you can probably go with this kind of configuration. But if you are in an open field where you can see the horizons cleanly without any obstructions, you may not require a higher gain at lower elevation angles but overall the radiation pattern will be well rounded and it will keep good gains all throughout and this configuration can be used in such situations so this figure shows the superimposed radiation patterns of the three configurations that we discussed earlier the yellow one is the antenna at three meter height without reflector the blue one is antenna at three meter height with a reflector and the orange one is the antenna at one meter height with a reflector so i started with a simple v dipole antenna at three meter height and right now i have this configuration the main antenna elements are at three meters from the ground and the reflector is at 2.5 meter from the ground. This makes the distance between the main antenna elements and the reflector as 0.5 meter. Each leg of the reflector is 30 mm more than each leg of the main antenna element. I plotted SWR curve with nano VNA and I could find that between the range of 137 and 138 megahertz, the VSWR was 1.31. This figure shows the signal to noise ratio values. This is horizon on one side and this is the horizon on the other side. And this is my location. This is a NOAA 19 pass, which had a maximum elevation angle of 85. And you can see that as the elevation angle starts increasing from one horizon towards my location, the SNR values also go on improving. And at around 75 to 80 elevation angle, they reach a maximum of 38. Similarly, as the satellite leaves my location towards the other horizon, the SNR values gradually go on decreasing. 
but all throughout it is giving very nice SNR values. This is the result of using the V dipole antenna at 3 meter height with a reflector. This is a NOAA 18 pass and this is a Meteor M2 pass. So I hope you liked this video. If you have not subscribed to my channel, I request you to please subscribe and please like this video which gives me encouragement and motivation to make more of such videos. Thank you for watching.